This is a special presentation from Wood TV 8. A potentially once-in-a-lifetime event bringing all eyes to the skies. A total solar eclipse is on the horizon, and the excitement is already at an all-time high. Over the next half hour, Wood TV 8 is bringing you special team coverage you won't see anywhere else. Featuring all five Storm Team 8 meteorologists. They're looking out for you with everything you need to know and what to expect when the eclipse happens on April 8th. Plus, find out how the history of eclipses relates to legends and folklore and how researchers use the facts to learn more about the universe. This 30-minute Totality Wood TV 8 2024 Solar Eclipse Special starts right now. It's great to have you along for 30 full minutes of special total solar eclipse coverage. I'm Storm Teammate Chief Meteorologist Ellen Baca. We've got a lot to get to tonight. In just a minute, we'll take a look back at the last total solar eclipse in 2017 and what makes it different from the eclipse we're about to experience on April 8th. Plus, a few important reminders on how to keep your eyes protected if you're planning to view the eclipse, as well as the lens on your camera or smartphone. And we'll touch on some of these other topics a little later on. The 2024 total solar eclipse will pass North America, tracking through Mexico, the United States, and Canada. A total solar eclipse happens when the moon crosses directly between the sun and the earth. Technically, this happens about once a month. However, the moon is tilted by about five degrees. Because of this tilt, we only see the perfect setup for a total solar eclipse about once every 18 months. It's by divine coincidence that we see a total solar eclipse at all. The sun is about 400 times bigger than the moon. It's also about 400 times more distant in the sky. Because of this mathematical oddity, it sets the scene perfectly for the moon to blacken out the sun completely, allowing us to see the corona spilling off its edges. The 2024 total solar eclipse will last about 4 minutes and 28 seconds at peak totality. This compares to about 2 minutes and 42 seconds for the 2017 total solar eclipse. Our Wood TV crews were at the 2017 total solar eclipse in the state of Wyoming. We bring you this story that originally aired just hours after that eclipse 7 years ago. A steady stream of cars made the trek west, called by the blue sky of Wyoming. Drove all day on Sunday to get here, decided we needed to go to a better sighting, and drove all night to get here. Here we have all of the people, we have the bluffs over here with the people on top of them, we have the clouds in the distance. This is really just amazing. We got there just in time. We're almost there. The difference between a partial eclipse and a total eclipse is quite literally the difference between night and day. It's getting too dark. All ski rounds. Oh, yeah. Okay, dark. Oh. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Even when the sun is 99% covered, that last sliver of sunshine is still 10,000 times brighter than the moment of totality. Oh, look at the stars. Oh, cool. oh my goodness. Oh. The view is overwhelming. Two minutes of darkness in the middle of the day. Around the sun, a blazing white corona. The grand finale. A diamond ring. All of a sudden, you see that diamond, and it's just brilliant. And then it explodes. Too soon, the sky is back to blue. Eyes drop from the sky and turn to the next chance of totality, still seven years away. Everybody needs to experience it in their lifetime, at least once. Safety should always be top of mind when viewing the solar eclipse at peak totality. You'll need to make sure you have special solar eclipse glasses on hand to prevent potential eye damage. Cameras, binoculars, and telescopes need to be outfitted with special solar filters as well. Storm teammate meteorologist Scott Larson picks up our team coverage with the best ways to see safe. 
Looking at the solar eclipse is a stunning and rare sight, but it can also cause permanent eye damage if you aren't properly equipped. As the moon passes over the sun, it focuses that light and intensifies it, which can lead to solar retinopathy, permanent significant eye damage. With that in mind, it's important to look for a pair of sunglasses before you look up, but not just any pair of Ray-Bans or Maui Gems is going to do the trick. You need to have a special pair of eclipse glasses, which is marked with a symbol from the ISO. That certifies that there's the correct filter for being able to look directly at the sun. Eclipse glasses are available at many different retailers. You just want to be sure that you're buying glasses from a reputable place and double check that they're marked with that ISO symbol. We've partnered with the Grand Rapids Public Museum where you can also acquire a pair of Eclipse glasses. They're less than $2 each, so stop by there if you're looking for a local spot in town where you can easily grab them. Once you're set with your proper way of seeing the Eclipse, whether that be with glasses, a pinhole viewer, or another device, you'll probably be tempted to capture the moment on camera. So here's a few tips for that. First off, you want to make sure that you have plenty of memory available on your device, that it's fully charged and ready to go. Don't utilize flash or attempt to zoom in on the eclipse as that's going to cause you to lose resolution. It'll become grainy and lack some sharpness. Lock the focus so that it isn't variable as you're trying to look up at the eclipse. Totality happens very quickly. So at that point, you're going to want to use burst mode if you're using a cell phone camera or something like that. Hold your finger down and you'll take many pictures as you get to that point of totality. Have fun and be safe checking out the eclipse. If you can't get your hands on a pair of solar eclipse glasses, a pinhole viewer is another safe option. And they're easy to make with stuff you probably already have lying around your house. Meteorologist Sarah Flynn walks us through the DIY process step by step. Hi, West Michigan. Storm Team 8 meteorologist Sarah Flynn here, and today we're getting a bit crafty. We have a solar eclipse upcoming on April 8th, 2024. It will be a total solar eclipse from Texas all the way to Maine. But here in West Michigan, we're looking at about a 90% partial eclipse. Now, in order to view the eclipse, you have to have the right type of glasses. You need certified solar eclipse glasses, which are 100,000 times darker than just regular sunglasses. Regular sunglasses will not work. Now, the Grand Rapids Public Museum is selling solar eclipse glasses for $1.75. But if you can't make it out there, or maybe they run out as we get closer to the event, or maybe you're watching me in another state, today we're going to learn how to make a solar eclipse viewer with just some basic materials. You'll need any cereal box, a blank piece of white paper, a pencil, tape, scissors, and a piece of foil. Now this entire craft will take about five to 10 minutes. And once you have all of your basic materials, the first thing you're going to want to do is cut two holes in the top of the box. One on the left side and one on the right side. Now that we have two holes at the top of the cereal box, one of which you'll be able to look through and view the partial eclipse, the other one we're eventually going to cover with foil. But the next step of this process is to trace the bottom of the cereal box. So you'll want your white piece of paper for this and your pencil. You'll set the cereal box onto the white paper and trace around. Now, if you do it precisely, It'll be the exact right size that it needs to fit. Once you have that bottom of the cereal box traced out, you're going to cut it out. Once you have your white piece of paper cut out, it should fit snugly at the bottom of your cereal box. Like that. Now that you have your two openings at the top of the cereal box and that piece of white paper at the bottom of the cereal box, the next step is pretty simple. You're just going to tape these two remaining cardboard pieces at the top together to create that divide. Now that we have two clear openings at the top of our cereal box, you're going to want to cover one with foil. It doesn't matter which side you cover with foil, but I tend to prefer the one that will be on my left side. So that's what I'm going to do. Place the foil on the top of the cereal box, and luckily it should bend and fit pretty snugly onto there, like this. Once it's snugly on there, you're going to want to tape down the side so it can't move. 
Now we're officially on to our last step. For this part, it can get a little bit tricky, so you may want the help of a parent or a nearby adult. You'll want to take something a little bit pointy, like the top of a pencil, and you're going to want to poke a hole into the foil. The reasoning for this is the sun will come through that hole in the foil, and it will allow you to see the sun at the bottom of that cereal box on that white paper. You now have your official solar eclipse viewer all completed. This is what it should look like when everything is done. We can head outside and test it. Let's go there now. When the time comes of the solar eclipse, you'll want to come outside and make sure that your back is facing the sun. Remember, it's not safe to look at the solar eclipse without solar eclipse glasses. You're going to want to line yourself up so the sun goes through the small foil hole and you can look through the open side of the cereal box. When you do that, you'll be able to see a little white dot at the bottom of the box on the white piece of paper. That represents the sun. When the time of the partial eclipse happens, you'll be able to see that little white dot slowly get covered. That's the moon covering the sun. Here in West Michigan, a crescent shape will be seen indicating a partial solar eclipse. Thank you so much for joining us. For more information on the solar eclipse, visit our Eclipse 2024 page on woodtv.com. Still ahead with schools in session during the total solar eclipse, we're checking in with local districts to see what their plans are for the big day. Plus, did you know eclipses can affect the weather? We're breaking down the science behind it coming up. Did you know eclipses can affect the weather? As the moon slides between the sun and the earth during totality, temperatures drop. In fact, previous studies show temperatures may drop as much as three to six degrees during an eclipse. With the sun briefly blocked out, convective currents can also shut down, changing the way some clouds look and briefly dropping wind speeds. Perhaps the coolest effect, the sky goes dark like a 360 degree sunset. Although many schools in the path of totality are planning to cancel classes on April 8th because of the solar eclipse, that isn't the case here in all of West Michigan. Storm Team 8 meteorologist Blake Harms checked in with some local districts to see what precautions they're taking. While most middle and high schoolers will be out of class during the peak of the eclipse, many elementary students will be in session. Bauer Elementary School in Hudsonville is one of many across West Michigan preparing to use the eclipse as a learning opportunity while also keeping them safe. Fourth grade teachers Jessica Kopka, Natalie Klapko, and Lindsay Morris are already discussing the upcoming phenomenon with their students. This morning they came in and there were articles on their desk about the upcoming solar eclipse and how this one um, is going to be almost a full solar eclipse in Michigan. Though the students are still having a difficult time grasping the rarity of it all. We won't see another one like this in Michigan until 2099. So this morning they're all like, I'm going to be 85, right? I'm yeah. be 84. <laughs> they're really excited. Their teachers have taken the opportunity to tie it in with other topics they've been covering. In science, our curriculum in fourth grade focuses on learning about the eye. So how we take in light and how we um, bring that in and then how we also see that in our, how it's flipped around. Students have experimented with making pinhole cameras to capture the effect, which has been a useful lead-in to eclipse-related lessons. The idea of nearly complete darkness in the middle of a school day is exciting for teachers who work hard to keep their students engaged. This is like a once-in-a-lifetime experience as a teacher. I'm a science major, so like I'm a little nerd, <laughs> nerded out about it, so it's really cool that we can bring this into the classroom. Um, I mean, that's what all my undergrad teaches us, is like, how can we take science, make it fun, but also make it hands-on? And like, I can't see any better opportunity for the students to learn science than to just walk outside and get to experience it firsthand. Preparation for safely viewing the eclipse has been made easier by a generous parent. We're really lucky because we had a parent who is buying glasses for all the students. So um, once we get those glasses in, they'll get to safely go out and watch. It's a near perfect learning opportunity that these teachers are excited to capitalize on. It's just like awesome that we can integrate it with what we're already learning and just make it super excited because that's what science is all about. Eclipses are experiences surrounded in suspense, superstition, and legend. But where did those stories come from? And is there any truth behind them? And how do you separate the facts from the folklore? 
We'll take a walk through history next. Throughout history, eclipses have been shrouded in suspense, superstitions, legends, and lore. Meteorologist Matt Kirkwood explores the meaning behind some of the myths. Wow, during the research for this total solar eclipse, you really appreciate how rare they are. Now here's the 21st century, which we're currently in, and all the forecast paths that are projected, 68 of them in total. And look at all the areas over the next 100 years that will not see a total solar eclipse. This is why we're doing it, because it's so unusual. For instance, just how rare is an eclipse? Let's go back to the 20th century between 1900 and 2000. Only 71 of them occurred, so that means at any given time on Earth, there's only a 0.2% chance of seeing a total solar eclipse, and it gets even more rare than that with uh, a solar eclipse is only about 100 to 200 miles in total width. They don't last very long either. So because of this and them occurring throughout the millennium of time, a lot of cultures didn't really know what to think of them. So a lot of folklore developed. For instance, the Vikings and the Chinese thought uh, animals were eating or demons were eating the sun, whether it was a wolf or black squirrel or a frog. Koreans uh, thought it was deception and theft that actually stole the sun. This is the one I like. The Navajo actually thought a total solar eclipse represented a balance in the universe and renewal. And the Chippewa tribe, actually actually shot up arrows with fire to try to reignite the sun. What I would do is just grab your eclipse glasses, look up into the sky, and enjoy this amazingly rare show. Coming up, how you can soak in the beauty of the total solar eclipse out of the state, out in public, or from the comfort of your own couch. And why eclipses hold the key to important scientific research and the way ecosystems and wildlife work. Over the years, solar and lunar eclipses have led to some important scientific discoveries. In ancient times, they helped determine the size of the moon and the sun, and prove that the Earth is round and not flat. Eclipses also influenced Einstein's theory of relativity, the equation of E equals mc squared, and what's called the curvature of space-time. It put a new twist on how planets acted in their orbits, which was confirmed during the 1919 solar eclipse. The April 8th solar eclipse will serve as the perfect opportunity for NASA to conduct research on ecosystems and life on Earth, with some help from regular people like us. The Eclipse Soundscapes project aims to replicate a nearly century-old study that dates back to a 1932 eclipse that passed over the northeast parts of Canada and the United States. Almost 500 citizen observations contributed to the findings. The Eclipse Soundscapes project looks to use modern tools and multi-sensory observations that will mimic and expand upon that study to better understand animal and insect behavior particularly cricket behavior. Scientists want to learn more about both nocturnal and diurnal species, which means they're only active in the daytime. The big question is, do they act differently at all? More or less vocal during a solar eclipse? For example, in the last study, several participants noted that in near totality, crickets began chirping as they normally do at dusk. Bees returned to their hives. The Eclipse Soundscape Project invites you to participate at all levels. From learning about eclipses online, to collecting multi-sensory observations and audio data, to analyzing that data, and in all locations, whether they're on the path of totality or not, the project is open to people of all backgrounds and abilities. Even though we aren't in the path of totality, you can watch the April 8th solar eclipse from sites along its path in real time. Do this on NASA's live stream. And be sure to stay with News 8 for continuing totality coverage, both on air and online. Just go to woodtv.com and click the News tab drop down for bonus digital coverage and topics we didn't have time to tackle tonight. That's it for us. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ellen Baca. Have a great night.